يفعل ثور هذا نالي ذا العالي بي شري بجين I take a gun and just end it all right away Hughes. I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. Who did you work for, Uncle Fountain? When... Who did I work for? Yeah. But I, you mean when I was a slave? Yeah, when you were a slave, who did you work for? Well, I belonged to um, um, uh, Burnley's when I was a slave. My mother belonged to Burnley's, but, uh, but uh, we uh, was all slave children, you know. I remember things... Um, more when I'm laying down than I do when I'm standing, when I'm walking around. Mm -hmm. Now, in my boy days, boy, boys live quite different from the way they live now. But boys wasn't as mean as they are now either. Boys lived to... They had a good time, and the masters didn't treat them bad. And they was always satisfied. They never wore no shoes until they were 12 or 13 years old. And now people put on shoes on babies, you know, when they're two years, when they're month old, I'd be, I don't know, put shoes on babies. Just as soon as you see them out in the street, they got shoes on. I told a woman the other day, I said, I never had no shoes till I was 13 years old. She said, what, well, but you bruise your feet all up and stump your toes? I said, yes, many times I've stumped my toes and the blood run out of them. That didn't make them buy me no shoes. And I've been, oh, oh, you wore a dress like a woman until I was, I believe, 10, 12, 13 years old. So you wore a dress, though? Yes, I didn't wear no pants, and of course, it didn't make boys pants. Boys wore dresses. Now the women's wearing the dresses, and the boys are going with the, uh, well, the women's wearing the pants now, and the boys are wearing the dresses. Still. <laughs> Did you go to work for Mr. Shirley when you came to Baltimore? Oh, no, no. I worked for a man by the name of Reed when I first come to Baltimore. I used to uh, commence a whole manure for him. The old horses were here then. Uh, uh, no, no electric cars, no cable cars, they were all horse cars. And I used to haul manure, go around to different stables, you know, and uh, people, everybody had horses for for the use when I first come here. They had coachmen, men to drive them around. Didn't have uh, automobiles. They hadn't been here so long. And, and then they put on a cable car, what they call cable car. Well, they run them for a little while, or maybe a couple of three years or four years. And then somebody invented the electric car, and that first run on North Avenue. Well, and had to run a while, and they kept on inventing and inventing until they got them all different kinds of cars in board. There was uh, horse cars, and there wasn't no electric car at all. There wasn't no, wasn't no big cars like you got now, you know. I just can't, I just can't think of, uh, what year it was, but uh, yeah. You 
You're not getting tired, are you, young friend? No, no, I ain't. I'm just same as at home. It's like I'm settling in the house. And, uh, I was thinking about, oh, now you know how we served the Lord when I come along, a boy? How was that? We would go to somebody's house, and, uh, well, we didn't have no house like they got now, you know. We had these, what they call, log cabin. And they have one old, one, maybe one old colored man would be there, maybe he'd be as old as I am, and he'd be the preacher. Not as old as I am now, but he'd be the preacher, and they'd all sit down and listen to him talk about the Lord. Well, he'd say, well, I wonder, Sometimes you say, I wonder if we'll ever be free. Well, some of them say, well, we're going to ask the Lord to free us. So they say, well, we're going to sing. Wonder shall I ever reach heaven. I wonder shall I fly. And they would sing that for about an hour. Then the next one they'd get up and say, let's sing a song. We're going to live on milk and honey. Way by and by, did. Oh, I can hear him singing now, but I can't, I can't uh, uh, repeat it like I could in them days. But someday when I'm not hoarse, I could tell you, and I could sing it for you, but I'm too hoarse now. And then he would sing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sing around the order. Oh, I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing it for you. I'm going to sing around well, I wish you could too. And when now your husband and you both are young, you all try to live like young people ought to live. Don't want everything somebody else has got. Whatever you get, it is your own. Be satisfied. And don't spend your money until you get it. So many people get in debt. Well, that, oh, it was cheap, and I bought it. You spend your money before you get it because you're going in debt for what you want. When you want something, wait until you get the money and pay for it cash. That's what I've done. If I wanted anything, I waited until I got the money and I paid for it cash. I never bought nothing on time in my life. Now, plenty of people, if they want a suit of clothes, they go to work and they buy them on time. Well, they said it was cheap. They che if you got the money, you can buy them cheaper. They want something for, for waiting on you for uh, till you get ready to pay them. And if you got the money, you can go where you choose and buy it when you go, when you want it. You see, don't buy it because somebody else go down and run a debt and run a bill. Or I'm going to run it too. Don't do that. I never done it. Now, if I want. Of course, I ain't got no clothes, but if I want some clothes, I, if I ain't got no money, I'm gonna wait till I get the money to buy them. Indeed I am. I'm not even gonna say, of course, I can get them on the trust. I go down and get them. I got to pay a dollar more anyhow. They'll either charge them more if they say taxes are so much. But if I got the money to pay cash up, I pay the taxes and all down cash, then I, it's all done with. So many of colored people is head over heels in debt. Trust me. Trust. When we found out that we were free, well, then we were uh, bound out to different people, Thicken and Andrew and Andrew and all such people as that, and we would run away and wouldn't stay with them. Well, then we'd just go and stay anywhere we could, lay out at night and anywhere. We had no home, you know. We just turned out like a lot of cattle. You know how to turn the cattle out in the pasture? Well, after freedom, you know, colored people didn't have nothing. Colored people didn't have no beds when they were slaves. You want to slip on the floor. Pat it here and pat it there. Just like a lot of uh, wild people. We didn't, we didn't know nothing. We didn't like to look at no book. And there were some freeborn colored people where they had a little education. But there were very few of them where we was. And we all had a, what you call, I might call it now a uh, jail sentence. It just seems we were in jail. Now, I couldn't go from here 
across the street. Well, I couldn't go to nobody's house without I have a note or something from my master. And if I had that pass, I don't really call a pass. If I had that pass, I could go wherever he sent me, and I'd have to be back. You know, when I, whoever he sent me to, they, they'd give me another pass, and I'd bring that back, so it's to show how long I'd been gone. We couldn't go out and stay an hour or two hours or something like that. They send you, now say for instance, I'd go to Shirley's place, I'd have to walk, and I'd have to be back maybe in an hour, maybe they'd give me an hour, I don't know just how long they'd give me. But they'd give me a note so there wouldn't nobody interfere with me and tell who I belonged to. And when I come back, why well, I'd carry it to my master and give that to him, that'd be all right. But I couldn't just walk away like the people does now, you know. It was what they call we were slaves, we belonged to people. They sell us like they sell horses and cows and hogs and all like that, have an auction bench and they put you on a up on the bench and beat on you, the same as you're bidding on cattle, you know. Was that in Charlotte that you were a slave? Hmm? Was that in Charlotte or Charlottesville? That in Charlottesville. Charlottesville, Virginia. They sell the women, sell the men. Oh, they And then if they had any bad ones, they'd sell them to the nigger traders, what they call the nigger traders, and they'd ship them down south and sell them down south. But, uh, Otherwise, if you were a good, good person, they wouldn't sell you. But if you were bad and mean, they didn't want to beat you and knock you around, they'd sell you to the what called a nigger trader. They'd have a regular, I was sailed every month, you know, at the courthouse. And then they'd sell you, maybe $200, $100, $500. $100. Were you ever sold from one person to another? Hmm? Were you ever sold? No, I never was sold. You always stayed with the same, all, all same the, person? I was too young to sell. Oh, I see. See, I wasn't old enough during the war to sell, during the army. And uh, my father got killed in the army, you know, so it left us small children just to live on whatever people choose to give us. I was I bound out for a dollar a month. And my mother used to collect the money. Children wouldn't, couldn't spend money when I come along. And, and in fact, when I come along, young men, young men couldn't spend no money until they were 21 years old. And then you're 21, well, then you could spend your money. But if you wasn't 21, you couldn't spend no money. I couldn't take, I couldn't spend 10 cents if somebody gave it to me. Hmm. Because they think, well, he might have stole it. We all come along. You might say we had to give an account of what you done. You, you couldn't just do things and walk off and say, I didn't do it. You'd have to give an account of it. Now, uh, after we got free, then they turned us out like cattle. We, could, we didn't have nowhere to go. And we didn't have nobody to boss us. And uh, we didn't know nothing. And there wasn't, wasn't no school. And when they started the little school, well, the people that were slaves, they couldn't many of them go to school, except they had a father and a mother. And my father was dead, and my mother was living. But she had three, four other little children, she had to put them all to work for, to help take care of the others. So we had, well, we had what you call worse than dogs have got it now. The dogs have got it now better than we had it when we come along. I know, I remember one night I was out after I was free and I didn't have nowhere to go, I didn't have nowhere to sleep, I didn't know what to do. My brother and I was together. So we knew a man that had a, a living stable there. And we crept in that yard and got in one of the hacks of the automobile and slept in that hack all night long. So next morning, we could get out and go where we belonged. But we were afraid to go at night because we didn't know where to go and didn't know what time to go. But we had got away from there and we were afraid to go back. So we kept in slipping that thing all night until the next morning and we got back where we belonged before the people got up. As soon as they come out to come out and break, we got out and come out to go where we belonged. But we never done that but the one time. After that, we 
all this away, we try to get back before night come. But that, and that was on a Sunday, too, that we done that. Now, uh, when we were slaves, we couldn't do that, see? Mm -hmm. And if we got free, we didn't know nothing to do. And my mother, she then she hunted places and bound us out for a dollar a month. And we stayed there maybe a couple of years. And She'd come over and collect the money every month. And a dollar was worth more then and ten dollars is now. And I uh, and the men used to work for ten dollars a month, hundred and twenty dollars a year used to hire that way. Uh, now you can't get a man for fifty dollars a month. If you pay a man now fifty dollars a month, you don't want to work for it. More like fifty dollars a week nowadays. <laughs> well, that's just it exactly. They want fifty dollars a week, and they ain't got no more now. And we had then, and we no more money. But of course, they bought more stuff, more property, and all like that. We didn't have no property. We didn't have no home. We had nowhere, nothing. We didn't have nothing on it. Just to, like the cattle, we were just turned out and uh, get along the best you could. Nobody to look after us. So been slaves all our lives. My mother was a slave, my sister was a slave, father was a slave. Who was your father a slave for, Uncle Fallon? He's a slave for Burnley. He, he, belonged, he belonged to Burnley. Didn't he belong to Thomas Jefferson at one time? He or? didn't belong to Thomas Jefferson. He my did. grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. Oh, your grandfather did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father belonged to uh, Burnley. And uh, Burnley died during the war time because uh, he was afraid he'd have to go to war. But uh, now, you, and in them days, you could hire a substitute to take your place. Well, he couldn't get a substitute to take his place, so he ran away from home, and he took hold. And when he come back, the war was over, but he died. And then, uh, if he had lived, it couldn't have been no good. The Yankees just come along and and just broke the mill open and rolled all the flour out in the river and broke the, broke the stove and sold all the meat out in the street and sold all the sugar out. And we, we boys would pick it up and carry it and give it to our mill missus and master, young master, until we come to be... Well, I don't know how, I don't know to tell you the truth. When I think of it today, I don't know how I'm living. There's none, none of the rest of them as I know of living. I'm the oldest one that I know that's living. But still, I'm thankful to the Lord. Now, if, uh, if my master wanted to send me, he never said he couldn't get a horse and ride and walk. You know, you walk, you'd be barefooted. Cold, but didn't make no difference. He wasn't no more than a dog, some of them, in them days. He wasn't treated as good as he treat dogs now. But still, I don't like to talk about it, because it makes, makes people feel bad, you know. Well, I, I could say a whole lot I don't like to say. I won't say a whole lot, no. Do you remember much about the Civil War? No, I don't remember much about it. You were a little young then, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when the Yankees come along and took all the good horses and took all the, sort of all the meat and flour and sugar and stuff out in the river and let it go down the river. And they know the people who wouldn't have nothing to live on, but they done that. And that's the reason why I don't like to talk about it. Because you're nothing but a dog. You're not a thing but a dog. Night never comes out. You have nothing to do. Time to cut tobacco. If they want you to cut all night long out in the field, you cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang, you hang tobacco. It didn't matter about your tired, being tired, you're afraid to say you're tired. They just, well, People, and if you was cooking anything to eat in there for yourself, and if they if they was hungry, they'd go and eat it all up, and wouldn't you get nothing. They'd just come in and drink up all the milk, milk, and just do as they please. 
from time to be passing by all night long, walking, mud, raining. Oh, they had a terrible time. Colored people are free. You ought to be awful thankful. And some of them are sorry they are free now. Some of them know they'd rather be slaves. Mm. Which because would you rather be, Uncle Fountain? Me? Which I'd rather be? <laughs> you know what I'd rather do? If I thought, had any idea, that I'd ever be a slave again, I'd take a gun and just end it all right away. If you'd like to learn more about the life of Fountain Hughes, the links to all of the reference material are in the video description below. And if you enjoyed today's content and would like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay up to date on the latest bird dog videos.